the Izubu Crystal Cup. I am going to be one of your casters today. My name is Fancy Wolf, and casting with me today is going to be none other than Gandare of the Gaming Clan Vato Clan. And Mr. Gandare himself, nice I think, if he's back. here. It. Quite possibly, he might be having some mic trouble. But yeah, my my bind to uh to undo my mute didn't work. But uh, hello everyone, go. I'm Gandare of the Gaming Clan Vato Clan. It's very nice to be back uh, in front of you all once again. Yeah, it has been about uh, three months since our last Dominion tournament, uh, the final Dominate Dominion, and uh, I was quite ecstatic to hear that Izubu wanted to run a Dominion tournament. It was on very short notice, and we've been scrambling to get this together and rock it. So uh, we are about to get started. The players are in the lobby, and they are doing their chat bans right now. For anyone that's familiar with uh, League of Legends Dominion competitive history, um, historically, there have been uh, additional bans that were done in the pre-game lobby to each game. Um, traditionally, there were two, but uh, in this tournament here that Azubu is running, uh, there's going to be one additional one uh, for each team. Yeah, so right now, they are doing their chat bans. They, we are going to see Maokai and Pantheon banned out. Maokai being an incredibly strong tank and initiator on Dominion. He's able to shut down teamfight potential incredibly hard with his ultimate. And Pantheon being one of the best bruisers slash assassins on the map. He doesn't have as much mana trouble over here on Dominion because we do have a built-in mana aura. And that, that mana aura is really useful, uh, especially on, well, you know what, just on every champion, there's no especially, it's great. Uh, you can hang out on the map a lot longer, it makes defending and stalling on points uh, very easy to do. Also, for anyone that's not already in the know, Nidalee is disabled uh, currently in this event uh, due to recent changes with her. Yes, Nidalee was disabled for her rework. Um, she will be available any, if we decide to do another tournament. Uh, once we get that going, should be good to go. But for right now, she's taken off the table, has her rework done. I was really excited to see her for this tournament, but looks like we're not going to have her around. The other really exciting thing that uh, I want to see with this tournament is we are waiting for... We were waiting for a long time for a tournament to pop up because Revive has been removed from Dominion. For those of you who didn't know, Revive was the go-to spell on the map. And since it's been removed, we've had a trinket added with Revive built in. So now everyone has two summoner spells to bring, and I'm very curious to see what people are going to be bringing in onto the table with this. It looks like a couple of the first champions to be knocked out are Braum, Talon, and Leona. So two tanks getting kicked out right away and one of the better assassins. Yeah, Braum, relatively new. Uh, people were expecting him to not be really strong on Dominion because he is a full tank, but he still has some damage to boot. Really, really, really strong. He's got that um, his shield he could put up, and that DR is insane. I've been playing him a lot myself, and you can pr keep so many people safe and protected. And then, uh, as well as Leona being banned out, she is another tank that can bring a lot of damage, can build pure tank in Dominion, and just has some crazy initiation powers. Seeing a Kogma ban, uh, which is something that historically has not been uh, very common. Well, they do. Uh, blue team, by the way, over on the left here is Clueless. Clueless is a very well known Dominion team. On their team, they have BB Pop and a Parkhurst. BB Pop is a very well known AD carry player in Dominion, and a Parkhurst is a very well known Kogma player. Um, so they may not want to see him with that. The Fizz ban is actually targeted at Wolfer over on Clueless. He plays a very scary Fizz bot lane. So they didn't want to deal with that. It's a very, very troublesome champion to have to take care of. And then it looks like we are getting into our picks. The first pick up for Clueless, uh, picking Vi first off. And over on the other side, we're seeing a Malzahar and Jarvin. Jarvin uh, having a long history of being used in Dominion competition. He's a durable character. He brings some disruption all around a really solid pick. He is highly represented in Dominion competition, uh, either being banned or picked in a large portion of games. Yeah, you, you see that Jarvan a lot. He's one of the best initiators alongside Vi. Um, they can both build pure glass or pure bulk. 
and it's it's very scary to see that assassin build on them. Uh, the Malzahar coming out, that's probably for Corval bot lane. He's a very well-known Malzahar bot player. And an Urgot pickup. Oh, are we going to see a half-hearted Urgot? That is going to be very scary. And a Parker's picking up the Zyra. That might be going to Popples the God. He's a very well-known Zyra player. So we'll see what they decide to counterpick with over on Purple Team. I'm really excited to see a Zyra pick. Zyra is an awesome champion in this game mode. Zyra brings a, a lot of crowd control and a lot of AoE damage to the team, and that is extremely useful for defending on points. If you are hanging out on a point, you know, Windmill is the best example. Zyra can solo defend for a very long period of time because of her range and her ability to disrupt multiple targets at the same time. Additionally, while she is dead, she still has an initial line effect that she can use to interrupt multiple targets, again, forcing people to scatter after killing her, which buys you another second or two, and every second matters in this game mode. Um, yeah, it, it's very, very hard to get a Zyra off point for one, and then if you do, you're stuck waiting for a while. Um, and then uh, over on the other team here, we do have Xander picking up his Volibear. He is known for playing that Volibear in Q quite a bit. He's actually brand new to the tournament scene. I think this is his first actual Dominion tournament, so everyone's kind of weary and wanting to see how he can pull out here, but I'm sure he'll do just fine. And then Sercio picking up a Mummy. He is a very good tank player here, actually just coming back from a long hiatus himself, so we'll see how that uh, handles with him there. And we're looking at a Ramus highlight, and I'd be really excited to see Ramus. Ramus is a very good tank. Sometimes he struggles with initiation because he doesn't have a, he needs a direct line of effect in order to be able to get in. His taunt is great, and his ability to stick to people is pretty high uh, with that taunt airborne, uh, getting tremors active. But he does struggle occasionally with the range issue, uh, and going up against a team. Uh, with mostly people that want to be in melee, that could be solid. Let me just see that swap out to a rumble highlight instead. Oh, Popples, I know what you were doing. Yep. He is, uh, for those of you that don't know Popples the God, a.k.a. High Peoples, a.k.a. Emperor Peoples, he's, um, he's a very, very, very good Dominion player, and sometimes he gets a little bored playing standard champs or champs are pretty strong and he likes to give himself a handicap so he is going to go with Mordekaiser who is regarded as not very strong in Dominion but uh yeah you do have Wolfer on that bot lane Nocturne he's still very well known for that he sits bot and then when team fights start to break out up in the jungle he has that ultimate to get up and help and turn that 4v4 into a 5v4 so we'll see how that plays out in the bottom lane there against Korval's Malzahar and now we do have the final pick. It looks like it is going to be a Karma. Very, very strong on Dominion. She builds full AP, and that Mantra Q, oh man. If you have never felt a full AP Karma Mantra Q hit you, you do not know just how scary Karma can actually be. She's got her shield for kiting. She has her tether as well. If she gets really low, she can Mantra that tether to get extra healing. And absolutely never mind, because it is going to be an Orianna. Ooh, I am a big fan of Oriana. Um, one of my uh, favorite champions. Uh, I'm terrible playing her, but oh man, is she awesome to watch because being able to stand back at a distance and chip away at people, her burst is pretty good as well. Solid character. Yeah, I'm looking as we get the swaps going in here. I'm seeing uh, we are going to have that that Malzahar versus Nocturne bot lane. That was pretty much a given, seeing both of those players' champions picked already. And then, I don't know, the team fight is looking a little wonky up here because over on Clueless, you have the Vi, who likes to go in and likes to go in hard. And then Mord will also be able to follow up on that pretty well. But you have the Zyra, who kind of likes to sit back and throw in that extra support as well as the Urgot. But coming over from Wine and Cheese, they have a very hard engage, all in kind of comp. So it, it's going to be a force meets force. And in that situation, I really think Wine and Cheese's team comp will bring it out a little bit harder. And while we have hit the countdown timer before we can get into the game, I can remove the blockers so we can see those summoner spells. Been dying to talk about these. We are seeing tons of flashes coming out from Clueless. And uh, as well as a Clairvoyance, it is a very, very strong spell in the upper levels of Dominion. Being able to drop it on an area of the map and see as much as you can. Wolfer bringing that heal, Ignite bot lane heal, still being a very, very strong spell. And uh, looking over at Wine and Cheese, got some interesting spells over there as well. 
and we are seeing we're seeing a heel each um, across both teams. And uh, I wanted to mention yeah, on the subject you mentioned the CV uh, that was picked up in Dominion. For anyone not familiar with the mode, there are no wards. Uh, the only effective ways to get vision are through a uh, few items. And being able to take clairvoyance now, um, we'll talk about the revive trinket in a moment. Uh, you know, having two spells, you can now spend a spell on something other than revive. And CV was something that we saw uh, very often, but it was difficult to use in a one spell environment. But now having that option of taking two summoner spells uh, is created something pretty awesome. Yeah, I've seen tons of variety in matches. Uh, my personal favorite being heal and exhaust. I play a lot of tanks and initiators myself, so having that exhaust to keep your carry safe or having that heal to keep your frontline buddy you know, healthy and fighting with you, um, it feels like a very good combo to me, but I'm, I'm still curious to see what pops up as this tournament goes on. Are we going to continue to see the flash? Are we going to see the double combat summoners? Clairvoyance is almost a given on the team because it is such such a strong spell in terms of map control but um yeah you can see jarvin going in with the full combat summoners as well as the mummy but it's gonna be interesting gonna have to worry the big thing i really think that wine and cheese is gonna have to watch out for is woofer's nocturne ulting up into fights unless coroval can get a good read and know when woofer is going to try to do that to be there um, that's going to be very disastrous for them because a 5v4 in Dominion is very hard, considering a 4v4 is already on equal ground. Another important thing to note on that subject of Nocturne using Paranoia to get up to the top part of the map and get involved in team fights there is if he goes up to the top part of the map with Paranoia, makes it a 5v4, and someone tries to push the bottom against him, then whoever dies first in that 5v4 on his team can revive and go back down to the bottom part of the map to defend for a push there. Or if they had died early and their, their timer's up normally, they can just go down there to break for him until Nocturne is able to recall back and retake the bottom lane and they can safely swap positions again. It's a very useful strategy in this game. Yeah, as soon as the 4v4 breaks out, someone will go down. Wolfer will try to get up there. He will immediately use his ult to get up there as fast as he can. And then once he has achieved that, someone will respawn to take his place down in the bot lane, thus not losing the bot point and winning the top fight at the same time. So we're loading into this game here. Let me get my loading screen up, make sure it doesn't break on me like it normally does when I'm casting. All right. So on the top team, we are going to have Clueless with Half-Hearted on Urgot. BB Pop is going to be on Vi. A Parkhurst is going to be playing that Zyra. Popples the God is going to be on Mordekaiser. And Woofer will be bot lane with that Nocturne. And over on the other team, we have Wine and Cheese with who? We have Floor playing as Amumu. Rathel playing as Oriana. Xander765 playing as Volibear. Circio playing as Jarvan IV. And Corval playing as Malzahar. I'm one half of your commentators. I am Gandair. And casting with me is... And I am Fancy Wolf. And uh, I am excited, I have to say. Very, very excited. It has been a long time since we had a Dominion tournament, and I, I really want to see what these guys have been working on or figuring out with the few patches we've had in between our last tournament and this one. So I'm, I'm trying to suppress my inner freakout at, you know, trinket use. Uh, the, the trinket in Dominion is a revive effect. Uh, when you, you know, instead of having the you know, triggers that, you, that some of you may know from Summoner's Rift here, uh, it works just like the Revive spell did. Uh, you hit it, it just brings you back to life, gives you a speed boost, you can get back onto the field. Uh, there are only three total charges that you can get throughout the course of the game. You can only ever have two at the same time. And they're granted at uh, 7 and 14? Uh, they're granted at 7, no, oh, excuse me, um... You would start with one immediately. It's 3, 9, and 14. 3, 9, and 14. Okay. 3, 9, and 14. And those are when you get your revive charges for your trinket. So we're, we're definitely probably going to see one. Definitely probably. That doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. Uh, the, we're likely going to see one before people hit 14, and that way they actually get their third charge out of the trinket. Because if you sit on two charges and you hit 14, that, that extra charge does not appear. Yes, yeah, so you can only have a maximum of two charges, so you need to make sure you're using them wisely or uh, making a kind of risky, strategic um, 
give up your life for the greater good move in order to ensure that you don't waste a charge accidentally. And we should be getting loaded in this game here. It looks like everyone's at 100%. There we go. All right. So let's watch these starting items come out here, see if anything has really changed. Remember, Prospector Blade does have attack speed on it now instead of Lifesteal, so that may sway some people from picking it up. It looks like we are going to see a Pro Blade out on Jarvan, and Korval seems to be going for that AD Malzahar. He is starting with Tyr. Yeah, I just uh, we're going to toggle on the KDA there, and uh, for anyone who is watching the stream, uh, if you look at you know the far sides of the items, that's where the trinkets are listed. You can actually see the charges there uh, as well, so we will be able to track them pretty easily. That's one of the things I was worried about is whether or not it would have that counter on it. Yeah, we can see them pretty well. Um, they are on the trinket slots. They do have a max of two charges. I'm trying to get it all in there, but. Uh, a little bit of the overlay is cutting it off. So, consume a charge, revive your hero, and instantly run back out. So, back to these items here. We do have high people starting off with a incredibly risky, I want to say, Sork Boots. Because Sork Boots will leave him with absolutely no extra HP. He doesn't have a lot of regen on that mord. He did grab extra health pots, but it's going to be a little scary. And Urgot as well, going for that tier. He's going to be very weak early, but as the game goes on, when he gets that Muramana, when he gets that Last Whisper, he is going to start blowing targets up. Both teams heading towards the upper part of the map, and uh, the Windmill is the first point of contest in most games of Dominion. I see Rathel checking the bushes just above the, the center relics there to make sure that no one's trying to cut in behind. Uh, which is a play that you always have to be aware of. Zyra seeing immediately that zoning from that character. Yeah, Zyra Urgot is going to be a very difficult matchup up here, and that poke, oh, and meanwhile, Bot, Wolfer is going really, really hard, but it looks like they're going to just back off of that quite quick there. One of the best times to engage in the bottom lane is when you see a fight potentially going to go on in the top lane. Yeah, you want to make sure you're... Socio going stuff. to be the first one to fall there uh, in this game. Uh, Rathel having to fall back out of the fight, waiting on Kulun's to be a little bit more damage. Xander falling back as well. Volver taking all those ranged hits as he retreats for trying to intercept, do a little bit of delay there, but can't quite get into the tower in order to interrupt the capture. And Clueless is going to take that first fight. Only one person went down, though. Jarvan did go down. He did blow his first revive trinket for that. So, oh, and Rith getting a flash. little low on that. Did flash away from it. Jarvan trying to go in and get some work onto Mord here, but Mord just laughing, walking away there. Is going to be able to pick up the kill on Mummy, and they are going to try to chase in on this Jarvan. He's getting dangerously low. Oh, and good I think... snare on Cercio, but no, he's going to get out of range before that Ass Hunter can land. He will be just fine, and they are going to be pressuring this midpoint as hard as they can. Clueless showing why they are still one of the top Dominion teams. Now that revive there from Jarvan useful in deterring them from pulling off an immediate push on that floor, taking some damage, having to fall back away. Uh, Sercio, I'm scared for your health, sir. And he is just going to barely be able to make it out of there. The distance cool. he was able to get away got him out of the way of that cross charge, and he will be just Very, fine. very close there. All right, and then chasing on to the Volibear here. He's going to run back off. And Clueless just applying so much pressure here, trying to keep Wine and Cheese locked on one side of the map as much as possible. The Clairvoyant's coming down, showing everyone coming out of that top side of the map. And when they saw that, they immediately come down here for the gank. But Malzahar did have his ult up, the heal coming out, saving more. But uh, not sure. And he up picks up the ghost as well. He did pick up the ghost as well. Three-man pressure down here on the bottom portion of the map. Floor taking a lot of damage from Wolfer. Zyra, good zone with that. Airborne tagging Xander with it as he tries to close distance to Wolfer, mitigating some of the damage that he would have otherwise been able to dealt at. Looks like that may have gotten Wolfer to safety. It still remains to be seen. There is an exhaust drop down on him, and Wolfer, though, is not going to be able to get out now. No, he is going to go down. In the meantime, BB Pop on this Vi is keeping Jarvan at bay, and I think... That is going to be a dead Jarvan. She'll be stuck in that Cataclysm for a second longer, but they are going to be able to capture that midpoint. I think Wine and Cheese sent a little too much resources down bot in order to handle that. The Clairvoyant's coming down again, revealing more of the map, getting that control. That control is what they've shown so far this game. 
BB Pop goes uh, goes for the open there, but not able to get anything out of it. Unfortunately. Going a little too ham there. Yeah. Oh, Floor, you are a sad mummy, and you've been tagged, slowed. He's just limping away, but not going to be able to make it out. Yeah, that Urgot doesn't even have his Muramani yet. He does have the Masam or excuse me, I think I'm getting my names mixed up. The Monomoon. He does have that completed. The Muramana will be done relatively short here. Uh, normally about six to seven minutes is where you want to look for that to be done. Now the area of the map that you see Clueless controlling is sort of this lower left, or this, this lower right side below the speed shrines, uh, below the, the center speed shrine, because that puts them actively on the enemy map and gives them a lot of different opportunities to try and set up ganks against the enemy team as they come back out on the map. So they're really asserting map control, and that's gotten them pretty far in the game so far. They've left their top open, however, and Wine and Cheese is able to escape out in that direction. Yeah, and that's one of the very, the, the biggest, biggest things about Dominion is you need to know how to exert pressure properly. And if you overcommit to it too much, you're going to get punished very heavily because of Dominion's comeback mechanics. But Clueless, this is why one, they're one of the top teams, is just they know how to apply the pressure, they know how to spread out, and use their resources wisely, and Circio getting caught out by this Urgot, getting absolutely melted. Oof, that Jarvan. And he is going to be able to interrupt Volbear as well, and there's the position reverser, Xander with the flash. Uh, might not be enough to get him out. The slow, is the Acid Hunter damage going to kill him? The one more no. Acid Hunter coming yes. across to finish off the kill. And half Hard is now free to go up and take control of the windmill while the rest of his team remains tangled up over by the drill. Popple's just trying to stay alive. Had a lot on him. He will get out just fine. Dropping that clairvoyance so his team does have vision to see. And this entire time it has still been three points in Clueless's favor. They held bot lane. Even though they didn't have top, they got the enemy's bot and they uh, used all their resources in other spots. Good so, stun by Floor there, breaking the tether uh, from Nocturne's Fear and Soriana. And moving down towards the lower part of the map, Nocturne. Uh, Ooh, oh! Catch that catch right there, Nocturne diving into the fight. Circio being taken down inside of his Cataclysm, but being boxed in, they take a lot of damage from Oriana and Mal's in the process. Three on three now, Parker's low on health, and man, oh, the flashback! Is he going to die to the Malefic Visions? Yes! He will go down to the Malefic Visions, and very nice fight by Wine and Cheese, but they need to get back out here, and they need to make sure they get their map control. Clueless still has revives. Some of them are starting to get up to two stacks of revives now, so they need to be very careful. And Xander, oh, walking out into the Clairvoyance and walking into members of Clueless there, getting completely blown up. 1v3 down here on the world part of the map. We have Xander coming back with the revive. Is he going to be able to provide enough disruption? No, not in time to be able to peel people away from Malzahar. Oh, Malzahar will go down. Meanwhile, up in the top line, we are going to have a 2v2 going on. The exhaust going down on Vi as well as an Ignite. But the ult coming out on to Jarvan. I think that's going to finish him off the mummy. Can you finish off the Vi? I believe in you, mummy. Just give her a hug. Oh, oh. no! So close! BB Pop, very nice micro, able to keep it going. And Wolfer running away from the bear. The bear is going to try and get him. I don't think he's going to be oh, able to. Oh, Wolfer, not quite. That Dustbringer could have made everything happen there, but just a little bit out of range. He did get a very good spell shield there. And Clue is still in control of three points. Their Nexus is held substantially higher uh, than their opponents. Corval moving up on half hard, doing a little bit of damage there. Trying to push these minion waves, this minion wave in. People's coming around for a gank from behind in a great position to do it. Just doing tons of damage. Trying to get some farm before he goes down. That gank was unescapable, but does manage to take down the Urgot in the process. And a Parkhurst defeated up at the top part of the map was able to delay long enough for BB Pop to arrive. Xander joining his allied floor there. 2v1 on BB off the point, which is bad for him. If that flash on is going to help him out, but is his health uh, going to be too low for him to be able to survive? Yes, unfortunately for him, that is the case. Four with the stun, zoning half-hearted back away from Xander, so Xander is able to complete the neutral. He was able to get to neutralize, but that is a Muramana Urgot. That thing hurts a lot. I think he might actually be able to 2v1 these guys. Yep, that, that is Muramana Urgot. You need to be very careful fighting that. Half hard picking up the triple kill up at the windmill, cleaning things up, and is going to be able to recapture that for his team. 
And Malzahar going down. He does have that ultimate onto the Nocturne. The minions are sitting there chewing him to pieces. Go AD Malzahar, minions, go. And he's trying to keep him zoned there from the point a little bit longer. BB Pop is waiting in the wings with the Charge Fist. Here he comes. I don't know if he has ultimate ready for this, so he is just going to wisely back off. Try to keep the minions from neutralizing the point. But oh my goodness, that Malzahar damage will just take him right down. But with the Voidlings down, Wolf are able to dive in and not suffer very much damage in response. Yeah, those Voidlings are so scary, but when he doesn't have any up, you don't have much to worry about. And when Vi went in on that fight, they had he had one uh, Voidling up that had a good at least seven seconds left on it, and then he spawned another one at the very beginning of the fight, and they were able to chip her down. Now Y and Cheese in control of the Windmill for what I believe is the first time so far in this match. Yes, they did finally manage to get that windmill back, and they're going to be in control of it for a bit, but now Corval is going to need some help in the bot lane. That Muramana Urgot is waiting. He's saying, come right in. I got my shiny blue cannon ready to fire some shots at you. Able to dodge a couple of dumb-fired acid hunters there. Half-hard, mostly just using those to deter the enemy from being able to close in on the point, using it as a, as a tool for zoning. And he has plenty of mana to do so. I mean, he's sitting at... You know, 1,600 mana, so he's able to fire those off pretty much as often as he wants to. Yeah, and then meanwhile up in the top lane, Xander was trying to ha hold off the top point. There was way too much pressure up there as well. It feels just like Wine and Cheese does not have their coordination down fully. They seem to be splitting their resources a little too thin or not going in when they need to to defend a point, and uh, that is going to cost them. Rith getting a little caught out here is probably going to go down. And they are in the... Uh... While that 2 on Cersei was able to secure the bottom uh, side of the map for their team, but they sort of traded points there. Clue was still with a capture advantage, so they're going to take control of the drill as well. Now Nocturne, uh, returning to the map, is able to chase Cersei away from oh. the refinery. Oh, the exhaust! And Mummy will be able to finish off the terror that is Muramana Urgot, currently sitting at 11 and 3 3. He, but he does have a revive charge. He's been saving it up, so he's going to get back out there and make sure he can help out his Nocturne buddy here. Ooh, a Parkhurst not quite tagging with the ultimate the way that he had wanted. Retreats on the point. Volleybear with the exhaust and the fling. Xander going and throwing down that disruption, helping uh, defend, helping to get that point back. Keep an Ori alive. And in the meantime, though, bot lane did get ganked, and they are probably going to be able to get this. I don't know if the mummy can chase both of them off. Mummy, stick to your tower. The Malzahar ghost is eating a lot of the tower aggro right now, though, so they don't have to be too worried about it. And that is going to be a three-man bot, and Ori is the only one down here to defend it. And, ooh, just barely misses that shockwave by stepping out. Wolfer. And, oh, does get the return. Rathel able to get away before Wolfer is able to actually finish the kill there. Paranoia is down now. Half hard up at the top part of the map, up by the windmill, is going to be uh, making sure that Volibear is not able to get a hold of that point. And actually, he's going to just outright kill Volley in the process, I, it looks I like. I think he might. He, he wants this kill. He is going for it. He said, you know what, I'm going in, and Wolfer is here to back him up. And down he goes. And Half hard does pick it up. Being a ranged champion, Urgot is very useful for defending solo points, especially late in the game when he has as much damage as he has now. Turning the drill around, if they secure the capture on this, it's going to put them in a position to immediately win the game. Yep, and it looks like their other points are secure and safe, so they don't have to worry about that at all. BFT going out on to Corval, he is probably going to go down here with another punch from Vi. And that is probably going to be GG. Now, Clueless is going to take this first game. Just looking at the map position, there's not enough time for recaptures to happen in order to delay the game any further. Well, very nicely played to Clueless, as we see why they are still one of the top Dominion teams. But uh, good showing from Wine and Cheese. I, I recognize a lot of the players on the team, Corville being a well-known Dominion player, um, and a lot of others just had their first time tournament experience. Thank so, you, Xander, for coming out and competing. I actually appreciate that. That's really cool of you. Yeah, that, that is very cool of you. So thank you very much. All right, and let's get to our stat screen here and check out what we got. That Urgot. I told you guys Urgot was scary. If you didn't believe me before, believe me now. That is a 15-3-3 Urgot. And when we get over to the damage charts, your jaw may drop. 
But uh, looking at the rest of the scores here, everything looking pretty good. Not a lot of deaths, actually. That was a very, um, aside from the Urgot and the Vi, like relatively low kill. No one went above 10. Normally, when you see stomps like that, it's a bit more um, kill heavy on one side. But going over the damage charts here, that Urgot towering above everyone else. So any of you guys who play Summoner's Rift and you just really, really want to play Urgot, come to Dominion because uh, he does work. Very powerful champion over here on this map. Has been for a long time. Uh, you can play him in the bottom lane or in the top lane. Uh, he's a better top these days, I feel, uh, than he is a bottom lane. But certainly an awesome character to have. Yeah, he, he used to be a absolute terror down in bot lane until they did the Summoner's Rift nerfs, cut his Q range and all that. Um, once that happened, he became a lot better top lane. You know, he can sit back. He's still kind of bulky once he starts to build his um, defensive items after his offensive items. And so he can kind of just dual bruisers and not care. And he also has a massive damage reduction on his passive. So uh, very nicely played by both teams. We are going to get into our second game here in just a second. So once we get that going, we'll be back with you guys. It might be Clueless again. It might be someone else.